welcome back to Montober. Today I'm going to talk about The Burning, which came out on May 8th, 1981, just one week after Friday the 13th, Part 2. Both are about killers loose on a campground, and this one did get overshadowed by Friday the 13th, Part 2. While nowhere near as enjoyable, it's still a good film in its own right. The film was unfortunately produced by the Weinsteins, and they were as tyrannical as ever. They even they even wanted the ending reshot apparently, and they wanted Tom Savini to do it. And he was friends with the director, so he even asked him if it was okay. Like, look, I don't want to step on your toes. They want me to do it, and if they're not, they're gonna bring in someone else who's gonna butcher it. So. At least I can keep it somewhat close, and the director was like, you know what, I'm fine with it. The movie's about a killer who's killing for revenge. He was a groundskeeper at a campground who was mean to the kids, so one day they decided, you know, let's play a prank on him. They made this skull and put it in his cabin. They put candles in it and lit the eyes. And then the kid snuck out, but as he's in the camp, you see gas cans on the wall. And this guy also has kerosene lamps. So, a good bit of combustible fluids in there, which I'll address in a minute. Once he gets out, they start tapping on the window, and when he wakes up and sees the skull, it scares him. He knocks it on his bed which lights him on fire and when he jumps down he knocks over a can of gas that was sitting on the floor with the spout sticking out which sets him up even more in flames which catches the rest of the combustible fluids in his shed on fire now i'm not excusing what these kids did these kids are 100 percent at fault for what happened but what I am gonna say is he was sleeping in a room with these gas cans he had an open one in the room and the man used kerosene lamps to have light in the room open flames what I am saying is Sparky here was always gonna go up in smoke it was inevitable and somehow he survives. He's hideously burned. There is a great scene where two people at the hospital are talking and one's been there for years. And it builds up how horrifying this guy must look. How horrible. Because one of the, the one guy's telling the new guy and he's like, Come here, you gotta see how burned this guy is. And when he shows him, the killer grabs his arm and... The other guy runs out and it's just him screaming and it builds up enough suspense to what he must look like that when you get the reveal it makes it even better. He finds out, we find out that skin grafts or nothing work, so he goes on a killing spree. There's a new camp in the area, we find out later the old one burned down. And one thing I do like is that we see through his point of view only like the edges of the frame when it's through his point of view are blurred and it's like showing yeah this guy was so badly burned it even damaged his vision so that was a nice touch something you don't really th most filmmakers probably wouldn't even think about but yeah maybe that's another reason this film kind of got overshadowed not only is it just another film kind of in the shadow of friday the 13th in the sense that it's set at a summer camp but the killer is also horribly burned and wants revenge sound familiar so yeah i can understand and also like the film itself although it's good it's like not as good as it could be. I don't really find any of the characters really worth rooting for. And 
or overly compelling for that matter. It's just one of those films you're like an observer going along for the ride. It's still got its fun moments, but it there's just no one for me personally to really get invested in. Not that it's not an enjoyable film. But he takes his time stalking these people through for a couple days until they have this camping trip where they go downriver on canoes, dock the boats and camp in the wilderness, and one of the counselors in a almost identical scene to the campfire scene from Friday the 13th Part 2 tells the legend of Kropsky the killer, and it even has someone playing the role jumping out and scaring them. I kind of did the screenwriters like know each other. It's like odd that you would have two summer camp movies with a very similar scene coming out at literally the literally just one week apart. And then he starts going systematically killing them. One of the first victims he gets in the woods, she disappears and she does come back later in a horrible way. He cuts the boats, so they build a ramp to a raft to get a bunch of them down river and back to the camp to get help. But he's waiting in one of the canoes, and when they come up to it, he jumps out and kills all of them. And there's counselors and campers on this raft, so this guy is merciless and he doesn't care who he kills. And then it goes back to systematically stalking the other ones. Eventually they do get a handful of the campers on a boat and get them downriver to get help, leaving the killer to just stalk a few of them. And we get the flashback reveal that our main character was one of the kids who pulled the prank that burnt Sparky in the first place. And here is, we get, I'm sure this is a Weinstein decision, but the one girl who disappeared as our main characters in this, like, abandoned mine, he, tri he like, falls over onto a mine cart, and he finds her body only, like, this is just horribly done, horribly edited, what it is, is nothing makes sense. She's not on the right angle how she would be if they found her. And what they did was they cropped her out in the frame where she was killed and placed that in the middle of this frame. And it shows the lighting doesn't match. She has the ex an expression on her face. And if you look closely enough, there's still parts of the tree she was pinned to when he killed her in the frame and it was one of those like it would have been better if they just didn't find her body eventually they do have the showdown he gets stabbed with scissors axe to the head and burned and they get away and the film ends with the one kid that was there with him years later now a camp counselor telling the same urban legend and it's an all right film i'd give it a c plus maybe a yeah c plus will do it's got its problems but it's still enjoyable in some ways the effects are really well done i would have liked to have seen what the film would have been without harvey scissorhands being involved but you know that is what it is he ruined a lot of good films over the years and the sad part is, that's the most excusable of the acts he's done, but that's a story for another time. So, it's definitely worth checking out. Again, not sure what the next film's gonna be, but you're seeing a pattern. At this point, you'll see in the ending card what the next film's gonna be. I'll have my mind made up by then, so like, share, comment, subscribe, over and out.